Here's a question that to me is an obvious guess and check. Now look, your math teacher might make you do something like this with equations and solving a system, but like, why? We don't have to. We have four answer choices. It's, it can only be one of those four, and the story is kind of confusing. There's a lot of stuff going on. What Guess and Check lets us do is just focus on one piece at a time. So an equation has to do everything at once, and it has to be perfect. But with, with Guess and Check, we have a little bit more flexibility and a little bit of, you know, another chance maybe to catch a careless mistake if we make one. So what I would do is I would always, you know, I always like to start with B. I just find that to be kind of a, a nice middle number. And um, I'm going to say, okay, what does nine mean? That's the number of children. Well, what do I know about the children? The children are $60 a piece. Okay, so nine, nine times 60, right? I can put that in my calculator, my normal calculator. Nine times 60 is 540. All right, well, so what? Well, uh, the next place I would go, I like to do addition and um, subtraction or addition and multiplication rather than any subtraction or division. So I'm going to be like, okay, there's 21 people and I've already got nine of them accounted for. Right, so 21 minus the nine children leaves me with, I don't know why I'm using the calculator, 12 adults. So 12 adults cost uh, $80 each. So 12 times 80 is 960. Now I can say, okay, what happens if I add the two numbers up? Right, it's supposed to be 1440. So 540 plus 960 is 1500. Where can I write that? <laughs> Let's write it here. 1500. So that's too high, right? That's too big. I need it to be lower. So think about this for a second before you choose your next answer, right? What's going to what's going to lower the overall cost of these 21 people, right? We actually want to have more children because children are cheap. So if we had more of the cheap thing, we would have a less overall price. So that means even though it's too big, we're not gonna go towards choice A. We're gonna go towards choice C. We're gonna get a bigger number because the bigger number represents the, the cheaper item, the children. So let's just do the same exact work though. All right, so 12, now again, times 60, that's the rate for children. So 12 times 60 is 720. Now let's switch over to the adults, right? So I'll come down here for this one. We had 21 people. We just lost 12 children. So 21 minus 12 is 9. <laughs> and that is the adults. So 9 adults times $80 a piece. 9 times 80 is 720. So it's a coincidence that they're the same. That didn't, I didn't know that was going to happen. But 720 plus 720, what's the total? That is 1440 which is what it needs to be, and so choice C is the answer. So I think this is gonna be a great question for Guess and Check, because I think if you're in this section, you're probably not really great at coming up with equations. And so this gives you a chance to get these points. Um, but I'm gonna show you what the equations would be, because if uh, you know, you're good at that, or you, you feel like you're good enough at algebra, that if you just saw it once, you could do it, that'd be great. But also there's a chance that we get a question like this and it's not multiple choice. It's one of those student produced response questions. And then we could still guess and check, but it would definitely be harder. So it might be easier in those cases to come up with the equation. So this is what I would call a quantity and value system. Okay, there's two equations we need and we uh, need one to represent the quantity. So the, in this case, the how many people are we talking about, right? So that's 21 people. So we would say, okay, X, or actually, let's not use X and Y, let's use A and C. So the adults plus the children is 21. So the variables are very straightforward here. The equation is very straightforward. How many of whatever we're talking about do we have? Then we need a second equation to represent the value of that stuff, right? So these people have value here, or what we would call a cost. So adults are $80 a piece, children are $60 a piece, and that gives us a total value of 1,440. So if I wrote those equations correctly, I still would not solve this with algebra because it's gonna just be time consuming and I would much rather use the calculator. So at this point, uh, let's, I guess, we could go to the A's and C's here. Um, yeah, let's do it, let's just do A. Let's see, uh, I don't think it's gonna work actually. I think I gotta go X. So let's do X plus Y is equal to 21. Enter, 80x 
plus 60y is equal to 1,440. And you can see, if I enter them, everything's gone. So I gotta zoom around here. Now it's always gonna be in the first quadrant because it's all positive numbers. And because these are just linear equations, uh, it's gonna let me tap and find the answer. So 912 is the answer here. So I'm gonna write that. Now I've gotta be a little careful because I kinda, maybe I didn't think this through enough when I was explaining it, but we've gotta be careful that we don't confuse the adults and the children. So this would be a good example of like, okay, maybe you start with X and Y knowing you're gonna graph it, or you kind of find a way to represent the X and the Y with the A and the C. So in this case, right, ADX means that X is A and Y is C, and they're asking for the number of children, so that's my Y value in this case. You could have swapped it. You could have swapped it, it would've been fine. So that means 12, and that was our answer, right? But notice the nine is still an answer. And this is very common with these quantity value system uh, stories, is they know that kind of somewhere along the way, if you solve, you might get kind of confused about what you're solving for, and you might solve for X when you're supposed to solve for Y or vice versa. So just my advice is know that that trap is gonna be part of the question and be extra careful that you don't fall into it, right? So this is a big idea on the SAT, is that if you know the traps that they kind of set up again and again and again, you can get better and better at uh, avoiding them because you see them coming. So this is definitely one that I've seen before and we will see again. So please, if you're gonna do it the algebra way, make sure you pay attention to what each variable represents so you don't make a careless mistake at the end.